Okay. So I'm um, triggering the live. Excuse me? I just, I'm triggering the live right now as we speak. Okay, we need. And we're live. Baker's in. Good. So let me come back to the Zoom. Let me, Marby, I'm making you the host so that you can share your screen. Okay. You are the host now. Thank you. And we'll hope that Marilyn. As soon as you bring up your screen, I will begin the recording. Uh, can somebody, Terry or Michelle or, or uh, Norma, could you help Marilyn get in, please? Okay. Well, let's see. I don't see your screen yet, Marby. There we go. All right. I'm beginning the record now. Okay. You are live and recording. Well, here we are again. Welcome. We are grateful you joined our live session today. We hope you had a wonderful, although quiet and sequestered holiday season. Ours was joyful and full of Thanksgiving for friends and family with lots of time spent on Zoom and FaceTime. We hope your family is safe and well. We are thinking about and praying for families who have not been as fortunate as we have, have been during these very challenging times. The Dyslexia Initiative, a nonprofit organization hosts our sessions because we understand how busy you are, we try to keep our session, sessions as short as possible. At the end of each meeting, we'll take time to reflect, answer questions, and review comments you posted during our wrap-up chat. This is our sixth beginning at the beginning session. If you haven't watched previously, previous meetings, you can visit www.thedyslexiainitiative.org slash the parent sessions. The purpose of our meetings. Is to share ways you can support or teach beginning literacy skills at home using a systematic scientifically proven approach. Here we are. Let me see. Here we go. Ashley is a co-founder of the, of the Dyslexia Initiative and is with us today. She facilitates our meetings and monitors your comments in the chat box. Ashley, please say hello. Hi, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> We love hearing where our participants live. So if you don't mind, please write your general location in the chat box. Then Ashley will acknowledge your locations. No comments yet. Oh, here we go. Cincinnati, Ohio, Los Angeles, Virginia, Cincinnati again. South Carolina, Sacramento, I'm going to say it wrong, Easley, South Carolina, I hope, Virginia, Denver, all over the country tonight. Mm -hmm. That's, it, it, each, uh, each session gets better and better. We have, uh, and occasionally we have people from Indonesia and Australia, London, so this is really uh, this is really fun for us. Now we've expanded our reach to Facebook Live. So now you can join us via Zoom as normal, but also you can join us through Facebook. 
Please know you can ask questions at any time using the chat box. At the end of our sessions, we always have a wrap up chat. This time is devoted to addressing many comments uh, or questions you have regarding our topic of the day or previous subjects we've covered. In our audience is our panel of educators. Panel members have graciously joined us to share their expertise and insights. Having experts who are well versed in the science of reading will significantly enhance our experience. Panel members, when I say your name, please say hello so we can see who you are. So we have Dr. Norma Baker. I know she's there. Maybe she's on mute. Terry. Hi. Michelle. Hi, everybody. And um, Marilyn Astori will join us as soon as she can. Let's transition back to our slides. Now, here we have our three cornerstones of beginning reading. We divided pre-reading skills young children need to develop into three segments, letter knowledge, awareness of language, and more specifically, the sound structure of language, and text awareness. These three words might help you remember the cornerstones, letters, sounds, books. Now, Harvey, our today- to interrupt you. We can't see your uh, share screen yet. Oh. Well, I guess it would help if I shared. Okay, just a minute. <laughs> we'll start over again after I share. There we have Marilyn is here. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, sorry. No worries. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Marby. This slide. Are we good? Sorry, I muted myself. Yes, you're you're good to go. Okay, so we'll say it again. Here are our three cornerstones of beginning reading. We divided pre-reading skills young children need to develop into three segments, letter knowledge, awareness of language, more specifically, the sound structure of language, and text awareness. Now, these three words will help you remember the cornerstones, letters, sounds, Books. Our purpose today is to expand upon cornerstone number three, text awareness. There are two important categories of language development under cornerstone three, vocabulary development and background knowledge. Today we will focus on language, vocabulary development. We will address the importance of building background knowledge in our January 26th session. So basically what we'll be doing from now on is our sessions will uh, occur every other week. So um, today is the 12th, our next session is on the 26th. Now the importance of reading aloud to children daily cannot be overemphasized. It enriches and expands children's vocabulary background knowledge as well, and comprehension through exposure to a variety of literature and informational text. How you read to a child and the conversations you have while you are reading can enhance these skills and concepts. Today, we're going to explore how to develop a young child's vocabulary using baby language, oh, excuse me, baby sign language before they can speak, rich vocabulary, descriptive language, and here we'll be talking about nouns, nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs, categorization, and compare and contrast. 
These are terms all teachers are familiar with, but um, some areas are um, areas that you that may be new to you. And I'm having a little bit of a problem here. Back up. Oh, so I'm moving forward when I need to be going backwards. Sorry. Let me back up to where I belong. Okay, here we are. So baby sign language. You've heard the phrase, babies are sponges. From the moment they are born, babies are absorbing everything they see, hear, taste, smell, and touch. Babies can learn to communicate at very early ages if they are taught how to sign. Baby sign language is about teaching a few signs to help them communicate. It reduces frustration before they can talk and lets babies express their needs, their wants, and feelings. Now, a blind study by the National Institute of Health found that teaching babies to sign improved cognition and emotional development. These babies tended to be more advanced talkers than children who learned language traditionally. Eight-year-old children who had learned to sign showed IQs 12 points higher than non-signers. But this is important. When signing with babies and young children, keep in mind, signing is not a substitute for spoken words. Signing and speaking happens simultaneously. There are many websites online that show adults how they can how they can communicate with babies and toddlers through signing. So today we're going to watch um, this video that we thought was particularly nice. So I'm going to stop my sharing and then we're going to move over to our video. Here we go. Hey guys, today I wanted to share with you a fun parenting tip and my favorite. We're spending a lot of time right now with our little guy. Hi, it's Dr. Mark. Oops, I am sorry, I don't know what happened here. Let me, um, let me figure this out. It's jumped on me. Let me see if I can back up. Um, I think I need to start, start again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the share and then I'm going to, I need to, um, Get back into I need to get back into Safari and find this video. Sorry. I don't know why that happened. to copy my my link that looks like an interesting video it's it's uh, this video is particularly nice this is a family that had a lot had a lot of experience with um, signing and mm -hmm. um, it's really quite sweet they show their young baby who um, 
my goodness. Let's see. I'm sorry, everyone. I need to. This is more complicated than. I need to pick up this video. It's really, it's so good. I don't want you to miss it. And my laptop is not cooperating. Oh wait, I know one more way to, sorry. I have one more option here. Go all the way down. I believe this is it. Copy this link. Paste here, let's see. Um, Kateri or Michelle, could you uh, talk a little bit about this um, session? Oh, well, I've, I've seen this video and it is, it's, it's amazing to me. Um, I'd heard a little bit about it because a couple of my uh, daughter's friends have been doing sign language with their babies. And they're, both of the, the friends are just so excited and um, my daughter is going to be doing it with her baby that should be coming pretty soon. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to learn some of the signs and I'm excited to be able to do that and to um, communicate with the infant via sign language. I think you'll all really enjoy the video. As soon as we get there. Yeah, as soon as we get there. <laughs> It just used to pop right up. I don't know. Well, what happened was the um, the link failed uh, for some reason. And um, now I'm needing to, I'm needing to um, get there. And now, look and at now this. we have, have an advertisement hair, coming up. Which is all due to Karen. Here we go. And actually, <laughs> we can't avoid the advertisement. Hey, just <laughs> I'm going to, finally, I've got the link. Now all I have to do is share the link. There we go. I had to find us. Okay, and he here we are. Here we are. Okay. Sorry, people. Thank hey you guys, for being so patient. today I wanted to share with you a fun parenting tip and my favorite. We're spending a lot of time right now with our little guy using this tip and it's highly effective. It's been super effective with all of our babies, but it's um, it's fun right now getting to do this with him and seeing how um, easy it is for him and how much easier it is for us to communicate with him. So spoiler alert, <laughs> yes, it has to do with communication. Um, as an interpreter for the deaf um, for a long time, uh, one of my favorite things to do is to teach babies sign language, not baby sign language, but just regular sign language. In the same way that you wouldn't speak baby talk to your infants, there's no need to teach your babies baby sign language. Just teach them the regular signs. If you don't know what those regular signs are, I'm gonna give you the top 10 um, ones that we start off with with our babies. Of course, you can choose your own, but these are just the ones that we teach our babies initially because they're the ones that they want initially, at least that we understand that they want. <laughs> okay, so a few of the signs that we really like to start off with in our home are milk, 
we like to sign more with babies, especially as they're learning to eat finger food or have um, little sips of a cup. We can you can use more. Um, we like to add in please with them. You just take a flat hand and you rub it all in your chest in a circular motion, please. Now, don't close your hand because that's a different sign. Just leave it open, please. So more you can add in two words together and make a sentence. More, please. Do you want to eat? More, please. Good boy. Marvy, Marvy. Marvy, we can't say this. Okay. Right. And yeah. that, when they're finished drinking, you can say, all done. Say, all done. All done. Good job, buddy. You can ask them if they're finished eating or, or drinking or, or having milk or whatever. You can say, all done. Or you can say, it's also a fun way for the babies to be able to communicate. Okay, I've got the siblings kissing all over my face. I want them out of my space, all done. <laughs> um, that really does help with communication in our home. There's lots of kisses around here. Um, so we have milk, more please, all done. Um, what is another one? Bath, because sometimes after eating we need baths, right? Bath. Right. Yeah. Our babies love baths, and so they tend to ask for them all the time. So they learn this sign early on. Um, another one is maybe if you have a pet in your home, you can teach them the sign for that pet, whether it's a cat or a dog. You just hit your thigh and then snap. Of course, babies will not be able to snap, so it's okay just to teach them just to hit their thigh. Dog! Um, as you're teaching these, make sure you point to whatever it is you're teaching them so they know what exactly it is. When you give them um, milk or you give them more, you can always teach them to say thank you. You can do it with two hands or one hand. Either way is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Yay. <laughs> Another word that seems pretty popular and at the early ages is bed. You sign bed. Just put your two hands together and rest it your head on them over here, then close your eyes. It's to show that you're getting ready to go to sleep. Bed. Um, sometimes babies are just really tired and they're kind of over it and they're finished eating and they're just ready to go lay down and go to sleep. It's really difficult if they can't communicate that to you. So if they can say bed, then it takes the guesswork out of it. Ah. Don't touch. A lot of times we're telling our little guys, don't touch, because we want them to be safe and protected. So this is the sign for touch. But if we don't want them to touch something, we shake our head, no, don't touch. You can also move it around. So if you touch the thing that you don't want them to touch, you can put it in different places. Don't touch my earrings. Don't touch my eyes. Um, touch my necklace or whatever it is. Well, I don't have a necklace, but if you had a necklace, um, you can say, don't touch the, the light switch or something like that. That's fine too. Um, and the last one is wait. Sometimes they can't get what they really want in that very moment. Maybe you're making them more or you're making, or you're getting them milk, then they need to wait, right? So it's okay to teach them these things so they understand and they can tell you, Oh, I'm waiting. <laughs> um, or sometimes you can tell them wait for their turn or wait to go to sleep or wait for the bath. Um, if they don't understand later or something like that, they can understand wait. Those are just the top 10 signs that we like to begin with in our home. They're relevant to us for our family. Of course, you can choose your own, but those are just our, some of our favorites. We love teaching our little guys sign language. All of the kids in our family um, have signed, some more fluently than others. Some have really taken to it quickly. Some have, um, I don't know, they continue to sign much past their verbal spoken language. Um, and some drop it as soon as they develop spoken language, which is totally fine too. Just whatever fits them and fits your family. Um, all of them have continued to be really great at receptive sign language skills. So they, if I'm signing to them, they understand, they pick it up and they can respond in kind. Um, they may not sign back to me anymore or they may. So it's kind of fun now our older ones are teaching the littler guy um, 
Ryan now he is learning a lot of sign language because all of his siblings are have renewed interest because they want him to learn words and they want him to be able to communicate with them so they're really into it right now and they're really um, excited about teaching him new words and he's picking them up really fast and it's just amazing to watch this process you'll be amazed um, how quickly they learn it and how um, clearly they're able to communicate with you it really does cut down on tantrums and frustration um, also, it's really great for situations where you can't really um, communicate clearly if you're in a, a situation where you have to be quiet or they're on the other side of a window or glass or they're in a car and you're pumping gas or something like that. Um, just the other day, I was pumping gas and um, my five-year-old was talking to me and I couldn't understand what he was saying. And so I signed him, just wait, wait. Um, and, and he was like, okay, yeah, sure. He remembered right away what wait was. So um, it's just kind of fun to be able to communicate um, in situations like that, uh, where maybe there may be some barriers to your communication. So the fun continues well past those early years when they're just learning to communicate. Um, or they may lose it right away as soon as they develop spoken language. Either way, it's a great opportunity to develop um, the skill of communication. So hope this helps you guys and you've enjoyed it. If you would like more, then stay tuned. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> so cute. We love that video. Um, I want you to know that um, we, there, there will be um, on Ashley's website, we'll have a link to that video and, and others. So be sure to visit um, the dyslexiainitiative.org. What we're going to do now is to go back to our, um, to my PowerPoint. which also decided to get lost right now. I think we can find it this way. Everything got jumbled up when I lost, when I lost um, the video. And so I'm needing to do a little search go back to the PowerPoint, but we'll find it in just a second here. A great question came up from uh, yes. Facebook Live asking how young of a child do you think you can start the sign language with? Six months. Um, actually, I would start before six months, but at six months, um, some babies will start returning your, uh, their signing. So they will um, start so much earlier than, than um, you could have um, imagined. It's, it's, and it's really, it's really so much fun. My, um, my daughter-in-laws use sign language with their, with their children. So I was able to, to do signing with my, with my grandkids. And um, it was really, really fun. So my son started signing at about six. His daycare taught him the sign for more. And that was a great thing around our house. <laughs> and all done. <laughs> Also, another great one. Okay. So I don't imagine many babies are going to sign bath, but you know, maybe that's just my kid. Um, <laughs> well, they're all different. We know they're all different. So here's the website link, just in case you want to write it down. Um, I would just remember it's at YouTube and watch question mark V equals whatever, I'll give you a second here to jot it down if you want, but know that this link will also be um, on Ashley's website and we can reference that at the end too.
So let's just review the benefits of baby sign language. Besides being just fun. So you know parents are often told if you read to your child, your child will learn to read. And while reading is important, children need so much more. Every time you interact with the child, you are supporting his or her communication skills, expanding vocabulary and improving comprehension. Just hearing a parent's voice and the words being spoken stimulate language receptors in a child's brain. Reading, singing, and reciting nursery rhymes and poems supports vocabulary development. And we know the opportunities for talking with a child are endless. Playing word games, cooking, walking, taking a walk, getting a child ready for bed, or even changing diapers are everyday interactions that can be used to enhance vocabulary. So we know, as we've seen, even before children begin to speak, you can um, talk to them, and without expecting an answer, you can describe objects that they see. You can answer, you can answer your what and why questions, or you can solve simple problems help them solve simple problems such as saying, it's cold outside, but do we need to wear? When speaking with the child, encourage all attempts to respond. From the time children are born, they have nonverbal ways to communicate. They cry, they smile, babble, laugh, or just make eye contact. Look for and support all of these nonverbal responses. Now there's agreement among re reading researchers that students who have developed a broad vocabulary in a variety of subject areas have better reading comprehension. And this is true no matter a child's age. Multiple scientific studies have shown developing a broad vocabulary is critical. This only makes sense. The more words a child knows, the easier, easier it is to learn understand and remember new ideas and information. Let's watch two more videos. We're going to watch two short videos about, about why the simple act of talking and singing to a child is critical. These videos also show how mothers take advantage of everyday activities to develop their child's vocabulary. So now I'm going to stop sharing again and then switch to a new video. And here we go. Oh, MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a... What did he have? E Mimicking is a great way to help your child start forming words. If he makes an animal noise, try making one back. If he is saying a word, try to guess it. By responding when your baby makes noises, you encourage your baby to learn to talk. Using action words like throw and put and make are great for teaching your child about language. Hearing the words that go with actions can help your baby's brain make the connection between words and their meanings. Oh, people with air. <laughs> people with air. 
<laughs> ladybug. Big red ladybug. Touch him. Ooh, give him a kiss. Oh, that's nice. He'll like that. Action words can be used in lots of situations. Your child needs to hear lots of different words and to hear them used in different ways. This helps your child to learn the meaning as well as the sounds of words. And another one. Oh. Over one and two. All the different colours and pictures. See? The bunny rabbit in the hat. Your child is exploring the world around her. Letting your child take the lead gives her a sense of control and encourages exploration. Mm -hmm. And green. Give it a shake. Shake, shake, shake. Show interest and talk about the things your child shows you. Your baby thrives on your attention and will slowly start to understand what you are talking about. Look. Red, blue, orange and green. Lots of different colours. Okay. That's one. Now I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to switch to our final video. Not that one. Old MacDonald oh. had a fun e My goodness, I'm sorry. And on that the farm next... he had a... What did he have? The next video is... Stop this. Let me share now. This one. Here we go. Spotlight. Stop take sale. 40% off. Where's the sewing machine? Look, and the towels and some sheets. Things like catalogues are a great source of words and pictures and can help your child to build on the words she knows. Point to a picture in a catalogue and ask your child if she knows what it is. If she does, praise her and tell her a bit more about the item. Where's pink? Yeah. Where's white? Yeah. Where's yellow yeah. good girl where's the red one can you see the red one little one red a simple thing like preparing a snack is a great learning opportunity apple and sultana mm. so apple, apple. No. you can talk about the shape apple. size and color of the food as you prepare it sultanas yeah. encourage your toddler to tell you about yeah. the food Really? This simple chat can help expand your child's vocabulary One. by adding to the ideas and words she uses. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Talking together about what you are doing can help your child understand what is happening around her and gives her a sense of why so things happen. That way. Yeah. That way. Now go. Move your fingers. Move your fingers. Go, push. Good girl. Oh. Giving simple instructions oh. and using gestures helps your child understand what you'd like her to do. You can use everyday moments like this as opportunities for your child to learn. Push. Everything is a learning opportunity. Red flower. Do you want it? Yep. Say yes. Yes. Say thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
When you're walking down the street, describe what you see. A flower, the street, the cars. If your toddler doesn't understand, try using different words. Talking a lot is the best way to help your child learn language. Let your child show you the things he is interested in. Children love the fact that everything is new to them, and exploring the world is the best kind of learning. Oh, wood. Where are you off to now? Ooh. What's it feel Everyday like? objects are interesting to a curious toddler. One. Talk with your child about how things feel, Two. their shape, their colour, and where they come from. from the tree. Ah, yeah, that fell down from the tree. Yeah. You gonna put the shapes in the truck? Oh, wow. Everywhere you go, you can introduce new words to your child. Look, you I can use action words terribly. like push Look. and put Look, to explain the things you are doing. And descriptive words like smooth and hard to describe objects. Remember, the more words your toddler hears, the more words he will learn. You want to count the cars? We'll start from here, look. Start from the white one. One. Children love counting, so use your environment. Counting items, like cars, helps your child to learn about how numbers are used. Repeating things over and over again will strengthen your child's memory and help expand her vocabulary. There's six cars parked on the side of the road. You love cars, don't you? Yes. Hey? Wow. Look on the car. Say G. D. O. O. Six. Five. Yeah, now we'll go again. What colour is the car? Say orange. Orange. Learning about colours and numbers can be a good talking point when you're out walking. With every new bit of information, or every new question your child has, you can help her build early thinking skills. There, can you say 37? Yeah. Did you draw? What did you draw? What is that? Showing interest in the things your child does is a great way to boost their self-esteem. Asking her about her work gives her a chance to use the words she knows to tell you about it. Listening carefully, looking at your child, smiling and repeating what she says shows that you understand and appreciate what she is doing. Mum put wiggles on Terrily's foot. Hey? Your toddler may have strong feelings. It's important to recognise these feelings, even when your child is not happy. Talk about the feelings and use words to describe them. Be gentle and loving as your child starts to understand his emotions. Oh, come here. Sis, I love you. Okay, can you see our slides? Yes, yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> so um, also, once again, these links will be referenced in the Dyslexia Initiative, Dyslexia Initiative's web uh, page. You will um, go to that their site and then look for recorded sessions and then click on the link to parent sessions and you'll find all of these different links. So as you saw in the videos, language development happens throughout a child's day. Every opportunity deliberately 
purposefully expose your child to new words. It may take time for babies to demonstrate their understanding, but try not to let this discourage your ongoing efforts. Learning requires internalizing a word and then retrieving that word from memory. Pointing to objects in a book or around the house, responding to simple questions such as touch the ball, get your fuzzy blanket or put the big truck in your toy box are ways babies show understanding long before they can speak. Respond with interest to your child's attempts to communicate and remember to give your child time to reply to requests because it takes longer than expected or than you might expect or I might expect for children to respond. The more words children know, the better prepared they will be for school. The development of a broad vocabulary is really one of the most important aspects of early literacy learning. And by interacting with children daily, we can help ensure they will be ready to learn the first day of kindergarten. The more words a child knows, the easier it is for a child to learn new words. After saying a word that a child doesn't know, take time to explain its meaning because the more exposure to new vocabulary, the greater a child's vocabulary will be. Frequent repetition is important. Deliberately use new words often, every day. The first words children learn are usually simple nouns. Objects such as mom, dad, dog, and ball, and verbs, for example, action words such as bye bye, go, run, and cry. Once a child can identify or point to an object or action, let's say the word is dog, for example, we can add more words to make simple sentences. Instead of simply pointing to dog, and saying dog, we could say, this is a dog, or see the dog run? Next, we can add adjectives and adverbs to extend our sentences even more. For example, we might say, this is a black dog with white spots. We might expand the information about the dog even further by saying, the dog runs fast. The main idea of building vocabulary and sentences is to use descriptive language whenever possible. Children can understand many more words than we can ever imagine. Frequent exposure to a variety of words and repetition of those words is key. So as children's vocabulary expands, they can be introduced to categories for the objects they have learned. For example, balls, blocks, and dolls are toys, or shirts, socks, and pants are clothes. As children learn new words, help them group or sort words into distinct categories. During the preschool years, their understanding broadens to colors, shapes, birds, vehicles, furniture, plants, fruit, and vegetables. You can help children understand these categories through interactive and creative play. Another aspect of vocabulary development is the understanding and use of words that describe the relationships between objects such as same and different. Children can begin to use the comparative ER and the superlative EST forms. We're talking of words such as big, bigger, biggest, long, longer, longest to compare the sizes of objects. 
Use simple comparatives to describe the differences between objects. For example, you might say, this kitten is smaller than our cat. When playing with a child, you can describe its positional relationship to other objects using words such as above, around, below, beside, or upside down. These words are abstract in nature and require lots of modeling and explicit demonstrations before a child understands these words. So for example, while, while playing with a child, you might point out your truck is beside the red car, or you could say your teddy bear is on top of the toy box. Look for opportunities to compare and contrast and use positional words throughout the day. So let's sum up what we've been talking about. Research informs us that the more words a child knows, the easier it is to learn unfamiliar words. We can enhance a child's vocabulary by talking, reading, and singing. As we near the end of today's session, we hope you have gained a new appreciation for the importance of exposing children to rich and varied language throughout the day. Remember to take every opportunity to expand vocabulary. Respond positively to a child's attempts to communicate, no matter their age, whether they're really teeny tiny or your cute little preschoolers um, sitting on your lap. Allow time for your child to reply. It takes a little bit of time for them to respond sometimes. But most of all, have fun. This is such a special time when your young children are learning um, new words, learning vocabulary, reading with them, you're showing them the world, you're taking them on, on little feed, field trips in the yard or in the park. This is a really special time. So definitely, definitely have fun. Now we decided to bold this last sentence that you see on this slide because its message is so important. Explicit adult modeling and demonstration of the meanings of words are essential in developing a child's oral language. Now at the end of every session, we um, recommend some things that you might do to learn more about today's topic. So what we would recommend is that you visit the links on the Dyslexia Initiative's webpage. And in addition, now that you have learned so much about how important vocabulary development is, we hope that you start to make expanding your child's vocabulary a habit. Work on vocabulary daily and expose your children to a variety of subjects. Talk about things that interest your child and also things that interest you. And when choosing books, read books or choose books with rich vocabulary. Now our next session will be about background knowledge. We'll be talking about how to develop background knowledge and how to activate prior knowledge to enhance new learning and to support comprehension. Okay. For those of you who are, who are new to our sessions, it's time for our wrap-up chat. And during our wrap-up chat, this is your time to make comments and ask questions. Actually, this is our favorite part of every session, so please do not be shy. You know, other parents may be wondering the same thing you are. 
and um, in our recorded sessions, it's especially nice to have lots of comments, lots of questions, so that the people who watch our recorded sessions um, uh, get to um, learn more about this topic as well. We want you to feel confident that you know and understand the techniques and skills you can use to help your child with literacy and learn what resources are available. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of our wrap-up chat. So I'm going to stop our share. And here we are. We have our panel of educators. And um, Terry is going to be monitoring our chat box. And um, Ashley is going to be um, looking at our Facebook live chats, chats, questions. So um, are there any questions that either you, Terry, or Ashley would like to start off with? I don't have any yet because my internet's trying to go down and I'm losing my feed. So if you could bear with me for a few minutes. <laughs> Tonight is the night for technical difficulties. <laughs> it is. It is not yes. the night. A lot but of people must be online tonight. At least I love. I love the topics. Let's look. Um, let's look at the. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I was going to ask, have, have any of the participants tried this baby sign language if they have a, a little child or, oops, excuse me. It was. We did have a participant comment on Facebook that they used, uh, they felt like around a year was a good point for the sign language. So they were interested in the six month comment, but. Um, oh, did I made? It probably depends a little bit on, I mean, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination on probably any subject whatsoever, but it probably depends a little bit on the child. I mean, I know that my dyslexic child was, you know, quite capable to do the more sign at six months, but uh, the daycare that he attended was heavy, heavy on a couple of those signs and more was a big one that they used. So he learned that very, very quickly. I don't know that he necessarily, I mean, he's 12 now, so it's hard for me to remember, but. We worked on more when yeah. they were six months old and all done. Those were our, those were our first signs when uh, the children were, when my grandchildren were little. <laughs> they're, they're easy and they're very interested in eating. And, you know, really this is all about repetition. Mm -hmm. It's not about really getting, expecting a response at any particular age. It's just um, an introduction. It's a way to communicate. Um, we also, you know, would hold our baby's hands just as you saw in the video. You hold their hands and you help them do the, do the um, sign as you're saying its, its name. So um, lots, lots of talk, lots of baby talk and lots and lots of repetition. And then one day they just surprise you and they start signing. It's really fun. I think As, the role. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think the, the role that older children can play is really valuable as well. I think in, as it was shown in the video, it was great. They were all uh, engaged in uh, helping the baby. That was, a, I think, a wonderful aspect. And I, I wouldn't hesitate to do it when they are even a month old. You're not going to get a response, but it does help to communicate when they're seeing your hands and facial expressions and your voice all at the same time. I mean, instead of just, you know, talking to them and, and the, the gestures you can use are the are signs. So I, I would not hesitate um, to use it. Oh, at right away. They may not respond right away, but what would be the harm? I know they wouldn't respond right away, but like Marby said, you know, eventually they'll see what, whenever you say all done or more, 
if that was the symbol, I think it was, um, or please, if they see that often enough, they're going to pick it up. It's that repetitive, consistent, repetitive talk and action that is going to be planted in their brain and stimulate their, their all those synapses for, that are in charge of language. Right. You know, I was really excited about today's session because vocabulary development is really a key, key piece for preparing children for school. And um, I would have to say that in the process of preparing the, the session, I continued to learn so much more. And the other, uh, and um, I hope, I'm hoping that everybody enjoyed this, but what I also want to say, um, and I, I hope you don't mind, but you know, this, this information that I shared with you today, I didn't know, I didn't understand when my children were babies. And this is, I wish that I had gotten so much more information than having just somebody on the radio or my pediatrician telling me that it's important to read, talk and sing to your child. Because while that's the, that is an important message. Understanding what that really looks like in real life is very different for different people. Some people like Michelle were nat and Terry were natural um, teachers, but I was not. And um, just want you to all know that this is information we need to share. Share the information with your pediatrician. I hope that I hope that they will go on go on and continue to share this information with with their um with their clients because this this is vocabulary development it, you you can't overemphasize its importance it's just basic and you don't have to be a good reader to do this you don't have to be a reader at all you just need to be able to talk talk to your children hey marvie we have a comment from a Maria Mingo, um, and uh, she says, we attended a class called Signing Safari at six months. Our son learned signs through music and an interactive play. Uh, Maria, do you want to expound on that a little bit? You can um, unmute. Yes, unmute. And tell us a little I bit. I don't more. think our attendees can unmute, but they can chat. Oh, okay. Even in Zoom? Because it's a webinar and not a meeting. Oh, I'll see. This oh okay. Is okay. A new experience for us. It is okay. switching platforms. But, you know, uh, combining the signing with music and interactive play, I mean, that how fun would that be for a little baby? Uh, you know, at eight months, I'm sure that, or six months, um, very exciting for that child. I had not heard of signing safari. Uh, Maria, is that um, a lot, where are you from? Um, she said it was a class environment with other children and parents in Cincinnati. Oh, okay. wow. Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I wonder if signing safari is, you know, um, uh, an organization that's around the United States. I haven't heard of it here in Texas, but here in Texas, we have something called Little Gem. That sounds very similar. I know that oh. I took my son there uh -huh. um, and it was, I mean, it sort of looks like a little like gym, gymnastics, gymnasium sort of a sort of a thing, but it was lots of music and play and they use the sign language as well. It was very interactive and I know the children very much loved it. Uh -huh. And my daughter uh, took her her children, I believe it was um, with through the YMCA. So I'm sure that you can look, you know, do a search online and, f and find um, find an organization that is doing group work. Of course, now that we're in COVID, that's probably not going to happen, but there are plenty of online videos as well. Mm -hmm. Maria said it was held in a home converted to a learning space for parents. So probably pretty local to Cincinnati, but oh, okay. I love the concept and it's 
I think you can find things like that across, you know, regardless of where you live, there's, there's usually right. something set up like that. Oh, she says signing times is another video resource. Oh, good. So, thank you, Maria. Okay. Well, I think we have come to the end of our session. Um, a, re a reminder on the 26th, that's in two weeks, on Tuesdays, five o'clock, we're always here on the Tuesday at five o'clock Pacific Standard Time, um, we'll be doing background knowledge. And um, then the session after that will be on phonological awareness. So we have lots of, um, lots of new information to share and just a few more sessions on beginning at the beginning sessions, our meetings right now, we're all based on um, what are all about, what children from birth to preschool need to know and do in order to be ready, ready for school. Then after that, I believe after we're, we finish with phonological awareness, we'll um, uh, start working uh, on providing information for those of you who want to learn more about what's happening in kindergarten and first grade and how you can do so to support your children who are um, working at that level. And also the information will be um, appropriate for children who are older but uh, are struggling readers. So that's where we're going please uh, visit Ashley's website to look at our previous sessions. Um, I think you'll find them very interesting. Michelle, do you have anything else to add? I think, no, I, I don't think so. It, I just, the only thing I would say is the importance as I'm listening and thinking back, sometimes we read talk, uh, talk seeing, it comes natural, but knowing the purpose behind it is so important and doing it deliberately. Um, I just wanted to make that point. I, I think I did it, but I don't think I knew how important it was and why, you know, that you're doing some of the rhyming and some of the things that we're talking about. So, and then the only other thing was the rich vocabulary. Do you want to mention what, um, in case people aren't sure what you're meaning by rich, um, all vocabulary is so important. And I just, that was, only, that was just a um, thought. If you want to elaborate or maybe it's. Well, when I think of rich vocabulary, I think of, um, uh, books with uh, a, a lot of variety of the words that you're using and um, interesting descriptive words as, as we talked about, you know. So um, words that um, go beyond just uh, the short little sentences. So you've got something descriptive like the, for a young child, it might be the funny, adventurous, zebra frolicked through through the through the plains i don't know but varied um rich and um i would say words that we don't normally say when we're speaking with our children so it takes them be beyond the here and now but with the, with the words that we use mm -hmm. I think that's great, Marvie, to just, I wanted to just elaborate on that because it's just, it's not just the dog ran yeah. or, you know, it's a red car. It's a big car. It's making it more interesting. And even though we are reading some of the, you know, beginning fun little books for children, um, there's a variety of books and to look for that and not be afraid to expand that vocabulary because we think they're too young to understand. So right. I just want to bring that out a little more. Okay. Martin? Yes. Martin? To add to what Michelle is, uh, has said, I think that's a really important point. Um, one of the most 
uh, effective ways of building young children's vocabulary is reading to them at a level beyond where they can read. So there is a, a purpose for the, you know, the yes. short little uh, books that children will read early on themselves. But the books that we read contain words that generally they wouldn't read themselves, but they will learn the vocabulary in the context of the book that you're reading to them. So that, that is so important. And yeah. having conversations around um, these books. And another thing I think that is important to remember, there's a concept called floor holding. And if you've ever listened to a mom talk to her baby on and on and on, I heard this myself. Uh, a, a woman was in a, a department store changing room and she was talking to a baby about eight months old and said, now, you know, so-and-so, as soon as we leave here, we're going to join your aunties and then we're going to go shopping and then we're going to have lunch. And she's going on and on and on with this little baby, you know, and the baby is hearing all of this wonderful vocabulary and hearing about what's going to happen next, you know, as you say, beyond the here and now. And you, I'm sure all of us have, have heard parents talking this wonderful, rich language to little ones. And it's just so important because it comes down to the number of words heard. That's a huge, huge factor uh, in you know, why is it that some children come to kindergarten and they've heard literally millions more words, literally, than other children? And it comes back to this whole floor holding. I've got the floor and I'm going to tell you a lot more than you ever thought you ever wanted to know about this truck or about this airplane or whatever it is that you're talking to them about. So we need to... Um, go on and on, you might say, with children. So they're exposed to this, to lots of words. One of my favorite things too, was I would buy books without words that just had amazing pictures. Mm -hmm. And so it was up to me to create the story that went along with mm -hmm. the pictures. Nice. And sometimes I would be fairly there was one particular book that was his favorite and sometimes I would be fairly consistent, but I was never completely consistent from story to story to story. There were always different words that I said, different words that I would use to exclaim excitement and put things like that. And those turned out to be his absolute favorite story, but we never spoke to our child like he was a child. Yeah. And from very mm -hmm. early on, he had a very advanced vocabulary. So unfortunately, that was one of the reasons that they sort of pushed back on us against his dyslexia because he was so right. extremely loquacious, but um, it is definitely a strength of his because we never spoke to him like he was a child. Nice. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, and then those children, our ch and we all have children here that um, struggled learning to read. Once they do learn to read, they soar. Mm -hmm. They just soar. So um, I think I think this was a good session in spite of all of our technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks when we talk about the importance of background knowledge. It's kind of a, the twin for <laughs> vocabulary development. It's the next, it's right. the next important step. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marby. Bye. Bye. Ashley, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Have a good, have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.